Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back. It's Brandon with Campbell Fitness and today we're going to talk about a very controversial subject and that is soy protein. The reason I want to talk about this today is because I'm sure we've all heard that you should stay away from soy protein because what it does, it increases your estrogen. And obviously being a male and wanting to have as much testosterone as possible, build muscle, estrogen is something that we want to stay away from because it's linked with things like gyno or man boobs, if you will, as well as other female characteristics. So today what I want to talk about is soy protein and the fact, is it or is it not something that contains estrogen and you should or shouldn't stay away from? So first things first, I want to try to keep this fairly basic because it can get pretty complicated. The soybean itself, where soy protein comes from, is actually a bean that's native to Southeast Asia. So it's really big in Asian cultures. Now, you might be more familiar with it with soy protein, soy milk, tofu, things like that. Now, what soy contains is something called isoflavins. And these isoflavins are what are considered phytoestrogen. So a lot of people hear this, and this is where soy really gets the reputation for containing estrogen, because it in fact does. However, the key thing to take away from this is the fact that it contains phytoestrogen. Now, what this means is that it's an estrogen derived from plants, which is completely different than human estrogen. So that's something to take into consideration going forward with this. Again, I don't want to get too complicated and talk about all the differences and specifics of these isoflavins and phytoestrogens, but what you need to take into account, like many things that are referenced when people are trying to argue a point or validity saying that soy is bad for you, is that they'll reference extreme examples or have certain things that they reference that aren't necessarily scientifically proven which just so happens to be the case with most things that are labeled as bro science, and I think soy actually falls into that category. The basic general feeling I have on soy is it's something that can be a part of your diet if it's taken within moderation, just like any other thing that we talk about, such as fats, proteins, carbs, other specific sources of fat. Anything in moderation is really fine as long as it's kept under control. And the nice thing about soy is that most people aren't going to go overboard with it. So a lot of these studies or examples, or you might have read something where someone developed breast tissue from this, which I did a male. The thing is, is that they're taking into consideration such large dosages of soy that it's not really realistic for any normal person to ever experience those factors. Just like things when we deal with GI index and things like that. It looks at stuff in a microchasm and doesn't really give you the full story behind it. Now as time has gone on, there's been lots and lots of research on this subject and it's actually pretty much been proven that soy does not cause any change in males both with testosterone and estrogen. So a lot of people think that soy not only increases estrogen, but it can potentially decrease the amount of testosterone that your body produces. Now there's been countless studies regarding this subject that have shown that this is actually not the case. It doesn't have any effect on either. Now the problem with some of these studies is that they're done in the short term, six months or less. However, if you're to actually look at people of Southeast Asia who have been consuming soy for hundreds and hundreds of years, you can see that there aren't any examples of this of them either. In fact, in some cases, soy has actually been proven to be pretty beneficial for those people that are experiencing cancer, both with women and breast cancer, and men and prostate cancer. Now, I'm not telling you to go out and start adding in soy protein to your diet. What I'm telling you is that within moderation, it's completely fine as part of a normal, healthy, well-balanced diet, which again is the case for a lot of things that we talk about. Everything within moderation is okay, and you shouldn't necessarily deprive yourselves of foods if you enjoy eating them. Not to mention soy does have some benefits as far as that goes being a complete protein and a vegetable source, as well as being able to be eaten by people who are vegans or don't like to eat meat or other animal byproducts. So there you go, a little bit of info about soy protein, a lot of misconceptions out there. I know that it's out there. The reason being is I did a poll on my Facebook page for Camel Fitness, which you can again always find in the description box below, and I asked, you know, what do you guys think or what have you heard about soy protein? And I gave you a couple options. I gave you option number one, it increases your estrogen. Option number two, it doesn't increase estrogen. And number three, what the f is soy protein? And the majority of you people selected that it does increase your estrogen, 
which again, if you look at the research, read the studies, and see how soy works with the body, and knowing that a phytoestrogen isn't going to have the same effects as another type of estrogen in your system, you should be in the clear for soy protein. So I hope that clears some things up. Again, if you want more information on this subject, I highly encourage you to look at some of the research readily available online. Instead of actually trying this out for yourself and doing your own tests, or going and taking the word from your local bro at your gym, go ahead and do the information search yourself. As always, everybody, thanks so much for watching. Stay big.